Welcome again to 10 with Ken. I'm Ken Steele. For the past two weeks, we've been here in the Brand Chemistry Lab. We've looked at how many colleges and universities play it safe when they launch a new brand identity, but some deliberately court controversy in order to garner media attention. Generally speaking, the more controversial efforts are coming from smaller institutions in remote locations like Northern Ontario or the Maritimes. This week we wrap up our examination of 2015 rebrands and campaigns by looking at a number of higher ed brands that featured new names and nicknames. Let's take 10 and take a look. Over the years or centuries, colleges and universities accumulate significant brand equity among scholars, students, and alumni. And that brand equity needs to be stewarded, not squandered. That's why you'll seldom see a higher ed institution completely change its name, except to enhance its standing by emphasizing a new mandate. In previous episodes, we've looked at new brands for a plethora of colleges and university colleges that gained new mandates as polytechnics or universities. We've also seen plenty of Canadian colleges drop the words regional, community, or college from their names. Sometimes this reflects institutional aspirations to become a university. We're looking at you, Sheridan. But more often it's done because nobody wants to be the last college calling themselves a community college. The stigma internationally and south of the border is even stronger. Consider the idiocy of the dean and faculty at Greendale College in Chevy Chase's TV comedy Community. The very word is getting tainted. Sometimes the community needs to be reassured that the college isn't turning its back on them just because it's dropped the adjective from its name. This trend is sweeping Ontario, Alberta, BC, and now Saskatchewan. Last spring, we saw Southeast Regional College in Southern Saskatchewan drop the word regional from its name and launch a fresh new visual identity in honor of its 40th anniversary. The new identity features blue and green ribbons to suggest the landscape, but also to emphasize energy, movement, and flexibility. And of course, in a previous episode, we looked at the rebrand of SIAST, the Saskatchewan Institute for Applied Science and Technology which gained polytechnic status in 2013 and renamed itself Saskatchewan Polytechnic in 2014. We didn't see many other institutions change their names last year, but the Association of Universities and Colleges of Canada did. AUCC announced that they would henceforth be known as Universities Canada, and they unveiled an entirely new brand identity. The static square icon was replaced with a much more dynamic diamond. Why does that sound so familiar? Under the guidance of the world's leading design team, we created a serial revolution, Diamond Shreddies. Shreddies are supposed to be square. It's more interesting looking. 45 more degrees of delicious. But back to AUCC, I mean, Universities Canada. In this case, the diamond is intended to suggest convergence and destination, invoking the town square a crossroads, or the university quad. So it suggests interdisciplinarity and also the key function of a university campus in this digital age as a nexus for concentrated interactions. I think the concept is fine, but I wish they'd picked something more colorful than black and white. Last year we did see several faculties and schools, though, renamed in honor of major donors. In April, Fanshawe College announced that its School of Building Technologies would be renamed for the late Don Smith, co-founder of Ellis Don Construction, in recognition of a $1 million gift. Also in April, UBC announced the Peter A. Allard School of Law in thanks for a $30 million transformative gift. And last fall, Wilfrid Laurier University announced the renaming of the Lazaridis School of Business and Economics in honor of the BlackBerry co-founder. Mike Lazaridis committed $20 million to a tech-focused management institute, and his name will also grace a new $100 million Lazaridis Hall to open later this year. As I said, renamings are relatively rare. Much more common is the gradual shortening of names. Academia seems to love three-letter acronyms, and every campus is awash in them. Sometimes they completely replace the original name of a department or school. Last spring, Ryerson University's Digital Media Zone finally gave in to popular usage and changed its official name to the acronym DMZ, 
The center had outgrown the digital media label, since it applied to only about 20% of the companies hosted there. Why isn't it DMZ? The simple but snazzy new logo features a Z made of converging arrows, signifying the zone's function as a connector for founders, clients, and partners of startup companies. While we're discussing Ryerson, though, late last summer, Ryerson University itself launched a major rebrand after months of research and design work. The old semi-serif typeface was replaced with a more timeless sans-serif font, and the dark orange bar turned vibrant gold and shifted partly out of the box. The primary visual device is overlapping frames of color or photography. The visual identity changes are subtle, but certainly modernize Ryerson's look and feel. More importantly, Ryerson has developed a new focused brand strategy. The branding project came up with five key differentiators for Ryerson from its main Toronto rivals. Ryerson is a great urban university focused on connections and creativity. Its staff and students are enterprising, they get things done. The school is diverse, globally connected, and relevant to society's needs. In some ways, this positioning strategy reflects Ryerson's roots as a polytechnic. The brand mission statement positions Ryerson not not at the corner of Young and Gould, but at the intersection of mind and action, preparing its students to transform themselves and their world. We are not the university that is on the uh, tower away from our communities. We are part of our communities, both in a geographic sense, but also in the programs we have and the intersection between the theory that is done in the classroom and the experiential learning that is done uh, in our community. The brand video, Mind and Action, portrays several students as dynamic and active. Connectors and inventors in the DMZ, athletes and champions for the Ryerson Rams, stand-up comics, poets, activists, entrepreneurs, and more. Ryerson's brand guidelines include primary, secondary, and tertiary color palettes, and the brand architecture allows for one- and two-level sub-brands. Intriguingly, the rebrand created two other logos of sorts, which brings us back to the theme of this episode, new names and nicknames. Ryerson's new informal university icon, composed of the letters RU, is for use internally by student groups and for some merchandise. Even shorter, Ryerson's new social media icon is reserved exclusively for the university's main social media channels and is a square icon containing only the letter R. Plenty of higher ed institutions are best known by nicknames and short forms. Many people recognize the acronyms more readily than the full names. Nova Scotia Community College, New Brunswick Community College, Alberta College of Art and Design, or Ontario College of Art and Design University. People are about as likely to say DAL as Dalhousie, too. Last February, the University of Victoria finally embraced the short form of their name, which frankly, everybody had been using for decades. UVic launched a dynamic new visual brand, including refreshed colors, a new UVic mark, and a wavy connective thread that invokes their oceanfront location. In every breath, we smell the ocean. From every point along Ring Road, we see vibrant green. But we know UVic is about more than beauty. It's about the extraordinary things we make happen in this inspiring place. Our edge, the UVic edge, is a place and a feeling, an idea and an attitude. That UVic edge comes from the powerful fusion of three ingredients. Dynamic learning immerses our students in personal, hands-on experiences and research-inspired teaching. Vital impact drives how we tackle urgent priorities for people, places, and the planet. Our extraordinary academic environment inspires us to continually defy boundaries, discover, and innovate in exciting ways. At UVic, we live, learn, work, and explore together on the edge of what's next for our planet and its peoples. Join us and find your own place at the edge. UVic's new Edge brand introduced playful martlets in complementary faculty colors drawn from the traditional coat of arms. But from the beginning, they emphasized that the new informal UVic mark 
was not going to replace the official logo and was only for occasional use in student recruitment marketing or on branded merchandise, for example. In launching a new, shorter brand identity, I think perhaps UVic learned from the example set by others. I'm sure you haven't forgotten that in 2012, the University of Western Ontario launched a new visual identity that generated its share of resistance. In a sense, they were announcing that they were shortening their name too, to the one word name by which it had been known by staff, students, and alumni for about a century. Western. The new logo was a major improvement over the previous one, which had featured a rather finicky illustration of University Tower that was rather challenging to use on any background other than white. The new visual identity was based on a streamlined version of the official coat of arms, which had been used for decades before. The new logo was elegant, traditional, and harkened back to the university's roots. It also allowed for a graceful architecture of faculty sub-brands. So how could anyone take issue with it? Well, the problem was that even though the university emphasized it wasn't changing its legal name, which would still appear on parchments, etc., it would henceforth consistently call itself Western University in all official communications. Really, all they were doing was adding the word university to appeal more clearly to international students. But for many critics in Western Canada, it seemed absurd that a university in Central Canada, or even the East, as Ontario seems to be known in Alberta, would call itself Western. It didn't seem to matter that Western was originally founded in 1878 as the Western University of London, Ontario. Critics just thought the name was geographically inaccurate. Personally, I think that argument is really weak. There are dozens of colleges and universities throughout North America with directional names that are regional in nature. Northwesterns and Southwesterns galore in the Eastern United States, for example. And other than University Canada West, a small private institution in Vancouver, there's really not much potential for brand confusion for Western University Canada. I mean, come on, it's not like they call themselves Western Canada University. Be that as it may, I think UVic deliberately used its traditional coat of arms logo in conjunction with the new informal UVic mark to diffuse opposition to the new brand identity. So in recent years, we've seen several strategies to pave the way for a brand change. Some institutions migrate their brand to an acronym to loosen the attachment of stakeholders to the previous name and prepare them for a new one. This is what we saw at the University College of the Fraser Valley, for example. Others create a memorable visual icon prior to a complete name change, as Malaspina University College did, for example, before being renamed Vancouver Island University. Some strip away all semblance of a logo to desensitize their stakeholders to the loss of the previous brand identity. Some switch to the use of a new wordmark without explicitly eliminating the old logo. And some make it clear that the old logo can peacefully coexist with the new one. In higher ed branding, the challenge isn't about coming up with cool visuals, a snappy slogan, or a provocative campaign that will catch the attention of prospective students. Much of the real work, and the part that far too many top-tier agencies seem to cut corners on, lies in conducting careful research, consulting widely, building campus consensus, and finding ways to ease the community into a new name or a bold new brand. Failure to do this right can result in tragic brand misfires and even end marketing careers. It's actually the part of higher ed branding that I think I like the most, and it's the reason my brand chemistry model works so well at colleges and universities. Well, as you've probably noticed, we are out of time. Thanks again for taking 10 with me. I can't tell you what our topic will be next week because it's a surprise, but if our production schedule holds, it should go public just around the beginning of April. Meanwhile, you can check out dozens of previous episodes on iTunes or YouTube. And if you subscribe to my free email newsletter, you'll get exclusive early access to upcoming episodes a full week before the general public. But just one more thing before you go. It's not exactly a new brand, but last June, Dalhousie University launched a new recruitment theme. Find what drives you. It's a new creative approach to address a recruitment challenge. Many students in Atlantic Canada are still just a little intimidated by this research-intensive university. Their strategy seems to be take the negative perceptions of a demanding, difficult academic experience and turn them on their head. Make them all about discovering your personal drive and passion. Here's their 30-second spot, just in case you missed it. There's magic in an early morning. Being awake and on the go before anyone else. 
committed, dedicated. It might not always be easy to get up early, to find the time, to make the effort. But when it's something you love, it's worth it. When it's love, you put everything on the table. Coasting through life isn't an option. Coasting through anything isn't an option. Find what drives you at Dalhousie. Oh, 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 o